Hey everybody, I hope that you have all been doing great. I am Iris Siriani and I help people have better relationships with themselves so that they can have better relationships with other people. So today I want to talk about um, a video series that I did uh, not too long ago. And the video series was about uh, four different uh, attachment styles in relationships and how they, um, how they, how these attachment styles are formed. And I, I have to say, first of all, that I am so thankful and so grateful that you watch my videos and that you comment and then you like and subscribe. And um, I'm just really overwhelmed with um, with the number of views and the number of comments on one of the particular videos in that four-part series, which was um, the fearful avoidant um, attachment style. And this particular attachment style um, is created um, because of isolation, abandonment, and abuse as um, as a young person, right? So as you know, or may not know, um, everything we learn, we learn from a very young age and it's imprinted on us and we carry our own personal interpretations of our experiences um, into our growing life. And so this particular uh, video, and I'm going to post all of the video links for this four-part video series in this video below. So if you haven't watched them, um, you can just have quick access to them. Um, but this particular um, type had so, so many video comments um, that I thought I, I wanted to address. Uh, some of the comments and um, with with the hope that um, that it might be helpful in moving forward in your life. So I've got uh, just a few comments that that I picked up off the video link and, and some of them some of the comments um, were you know people having an awareness that and and thinking that they're screwed up. So they would say things like, man, am I screwed up? Or I'm doomed to be single for the rest of my life. Or I fear being alone for the rest of my life. And I fear intimacy. Or I want to love, but I don't know how, right? And so there's a lot of fear um, about being in a relationship and a lot of mistrust um, of being in a relationship, not trusting in a relationship. And so <clears throat> I really want to, to talk about that um, today to, to help not just that particular um, attachment style or that type of person, but any type of person who is struggling in a relationship because none of us can be put into a box of being a certain way because um, we have different experiences throughout our lives and each one of us interprets information and experiences differently. And then we create a story around that. And that story we tell ourselves often enough becomes our experience and becomes our belief. And then we keep on attracting people um, and circumstances that support our belief. And so what I want to say to you is that you can change that belief. You can change your story. You can learn to trust. You can learn to love. You can have really great relationships. You can have that. That is possible for you. So how do you do that? I think as I was looking through all of the comments on all of the videos, one thing came to mind. And even without looking at the videos, just in the work that I do, I think what it boils down to at the very, very bottom level of everything is the love and acceptance 
that we have for ourselves has to be nurtured and it has to be grown. Um, how many of you doubt your abilities to be in a long-term relationship? How many of you doubt that you're even worthy of having a living relationship? How many of you doubt that it's even possible for you? Some of the comments speak clearly to that. But if you don't love and accept yourself and believe that you are worthy of having a loving, um, supportive relationship, you're never going to be able to track somebody or let somebody in um, that wants to give you that type of relationship. So, for example, have you found yourself in this situation? You meet somebody, you click with them, you're having a great time, you seem to have a lot of things in common, um, but then things are going really, really well, and that scares you, and so you push that relationship, you push that person away. Um, has that happened to you? Right? So that has everything to do with you believing that you're worthy of that type of love, right? So you can't um, have that type of relationship, that love, that nurturing, that caring, that supportiveness, somebody who gets you for you and somebody who accepts you for you. Because that's the other thing that I hear a lot of is that I just want somebody who accepts me for me. But my question to you would be then, do you accept you for you? right? So it starts from within. We can't look outside of ourselves to for somebody else to love and accept us because we don't even love and accept us ourselves um, in the first place, right? So it starts with loving and accepting um, yourself. So tip number one, if you call it a tip, um, is to start to accept who you are, right? Um, you don't need to be anybody else but yourself. Um, the world is made up of amazing people. They come in all different sizes and shapes and colors and unique talents and ways of being and different laughs and you know we all look different and how boring would it be if we were all the same right and one thing that I have started telling myself um, over the years as I go on my own discovery of how to love and accept myself is that I'm not for everybody but I am for the people that are right for me and that has become a really um, powerful mantra for me because it takes the responsibility off my shoulders of trying to be everything for everybody, right? And I'm not for everybody. Some of you may be watching this and go, oh yeah, you know what? She's just, she's just full of it. She didn't know what she's talking about. And that's okay, you know? Because maybe I'm not for you, but I'm for, I'm for somebody out there. I, I, I know that to be true. So we have to start somewhere, right? By acknowledging who we are and liking ourselves for who we are, right? And so you might be an introvert and you might be super shy. Um, be okay with that. What's wrong with that? Be an introvert and connect with other people that are like you, right? So part of it is about finding your own community of people who are like you. People who accept you for your zaniness, your quirkiness, your, you know, maybe you you are, you know, a technical person, you know, maybe you like to wear dreadlocks in your hair and, you know, I don't know, sit out in the forest for a part of your day, whatever it happens to be, right? It's about accepting who you are and really loving that part of you and um, and just trusting that there is somebody out there who is going to love you for exactly who you are, right? You have to learn to love and trust yourself, 
right? And part of relationships, this is the other, the other thing that I have learned along the way, is that it's not so much that we don't trust other people. It's that we don't trust ourselves to make better choices um, in the people that we invite into our life. Now, if that doesn't blow your hair back, right? I'll say that again. It's not that we don't trust other people. It's that we don't trust ourselves to be selective in the people that we allow into our lives. Okay, so how do you start loving yourself and accepting yourself? Well, first of all, this is uh, something that I do um, in the work with my clients and I'll share it with you, is writing out a list of as many things as possible, 15, 20 things, that you like about yourself, you know, and it could be your physical attributes, if that's where you need to start. Um, but I encourage you to um, look beyond that. And this is a really uncomfortable exercise for a lot of people who, who don't accept themselves or don't like to shine a light on, on, on themselves. And they think, oh, it's bragging or whatever. But it's not bragging. It's acknowledging um, the really uh, wonderful um, things about you as an individual, right? So they could be things um, in your physical appearance that you really like. And, and by all means, do acknowledge that because it all counts. But there's more to you than your physical is what I'm trying to say. So, you know, it could be um, maybe you like the way you laugh. Maybe the, the, you like the way um, you are really good at something technical. Maybe you like the way you're a great mentor and teacher for people. Maybe, you know, it's, it's part of something about your, your personality. Maybe you're really good at organizing. Maybe you are a night owl. People are telling you, you know, why don't you get up in the morning? Like, why are you always staying up so late, right? But maybe you like that you're a night owl and maybe you're most creative at night, right? And who cares what other people think? And who, who cares what society says is normal? Who says that a, a nine to five is the only way of getting anything done in the world? You know, incidentally, that old model is changing. So maybe it's something like that. Maybe it's you love that you're a night owl and you are most creative at night. Maybe you're an early bird and like to get up really early in the morning and uh, you're most creative then, right? So acknowledge all of those good things. Maybe you're an excellent um, leader. Maybe you're really good at, um, you know, supervisory skills, like whatever it has to do. Maybe you play an instrument very well those types of things. Write down a list and seriously do this and, and and read that list and keep adding to that list. And at first, you know, it might feel really, really uncomfortable to do that um, because we don't like to shine a light on how awesome we are, right? But you don't have to necessarily go out and share this with people in, you know, with your best friend or anything like that if you don't want to, or your co-workers. Um, keep it to your yourself, but get comfortable acknowledging the greatness within you. Um, and so review that. So that that is one of my top, top suggestions for you is acknowledge the greatness within you and start focusing on those things instead of all of the things that um, that you don't like about yourself, right? Because this is an inside job. Nobody is going to be able to tell you all of those things um, and you won't believe them until you believe them within yourself, right? So it's an inside job. Okay, so that's number one thing to do. Number two, one of the things that I have experienced for myself and have found to be true in the clients that I work with is that 
the shitty things that have happened in our lives when we were growing up, you know, um, whether you were, you know, told things that cut you down, um, whether you were told, you know, you weren't smart enough, you weren't good enough, who are you to dot, 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 fill in the blank, um, whether there was uh, physical abuse, sexual abuse, um, you know, it's easy for me to say, forgive that person for what they did. And, you know, forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for yourself. But I think that more than that, I think that there's a certain part of us that hangs on to a thought that perhaps they'll change. And if they change, then something would be better. Um, something in our life would be better. If they change, then it would allow me to change on some level. And I think that it's going to be individual as to, um, I'm going to have to do this in two parts. Um, so I'm going to pause, stop here, check in.